almost to the end. I mean, the box is actually six feet deep. It's buried in the sand. Welcome everyone to the 11th Annual Washington State International Kite Festival. You, this is uh, Team Tuesday. You're looking at the first day of six days of kite flying fun and activities. Uh, Tuesday is every day. Actually, six days of activities mean uh, every day is dedicated to a different facet of kite flying. Starting out with Tuesday, we're special new this year is going to be Pioneer Kite. These are kites that are designed actually from the late 1700s to the 1900s. And on Wednesday is Kids Day. We start the morning out with kids activities for age 14 and under. And in the afternoon, we'll be having events for the senior citizens. We've got big band ballet, where the seniors fly their dual line kites synchronized to big band music. Thursday is dedicated to handmade kites only. And we have 11 events scheduled for Thursday, so it's going to be full from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m., one right after another. Handmade kites from all over the United States. Friday, the other activity is going to be dedicated to stunt kites. We have dual-line, maneuverable, quad-line kites that will be out giving games, as well as demonstrations from many of the manufacturers and professional teams that travel at many of the different competitive circuits. Then we're going to roll into Saturday, which is a very big day. We'll start out the morning with a fighter kite competition. Then we'll have a big Cody kite fly. Right after that, we're going to have the uh, Rokaku kite challenge. We have a big battle challenge with Rokaku kites. Then we're going to have uh, many demonstrations from the single line manufacturers, as well as the professionals and dual line manufacturers so many demonstrations and and definitely crowd pleasing oh by the way friday night the other thing is the night kite fly and the fireworks display we can't forget that and everyone has to experience that at least once sunday we wrap the whole week long festival up with mass ascension day and world record breaking day we're going to attempt again this year 1992 to break the record here at long beach and that record is 3,373 kites. And that, we're going to do our best to break that record. As well, we have many individuals who've come out here to actually set some records that are established in the Guinness Book record. And there's some prize money involved for that. So we want everyone to kick back and relax, enjoy themselves here at the 11th Annual Washington State International Kite Festival. as a theme of the stamps that I work with because I'm a kite photographer. This year's issue features 14 stamps featuring 14 different kites from kite makers that have visited the Long Beach Festival over the last several years.
Yes, we're standing here in front of a big dragon. This dragon comes from the north of Berlin and is made by Detlef Vanier, who is standing next to me. My name is Michael Stelter. I'm also from Berlin. And we've been invited to come to the Long Beach Kite Festival this year. And uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Detlef. Detlef speaks German, so uh, I'll try to do some of the translation. Um, maybe we'll find out at first why Detlef is here. Kannst du uns mal sagen, warum du äh, nach Long Beach gekommen bist und wie das alles geklappt hat? Also ich habe seit Jahren von Long Beach gehört und das ist ja wohl weltweit auch das interessanteste und farbenprächtigste Festival. Das hat mich natürlich sehr gefreut, dass wir hier eingeladen wurden. Uh, Detlef says that uh, he's been very happy to have been invited here. He knows that this is one of the most famous kite festivals in the world. He has read about it before and was is very happy to be here. Detlef has built this dragon about two years ago. The name of it is Fantasy Dragon. It's quite large. It's the largest object he's ever built. It only goes out of its bag about two or three times a year because it's very, it does have wings, but it is very, uh, it doesn't like too much wind. So this is the reason that some people are also holding the dragon there. Uh, it is inflated by a ventilator. Detlef has been making these kinds of objects for the last 10 years. He started making small marionettes and he wanted to build bigger and bigger ones. And so he decided to make these inflated objects. This dragon doesn't, as I say, does not show up very often. So it's quite a privilege to, uh, to see it here. When you see these objects, here, which Detlef Vanier has made, uh, you have to realize that he was commissioned to do these for particular projects. The elephant was made for the recycling uh, movement, which was done in the GDR, where they don't have very many raw materials. And so they have a, uh, a meeting of all these people who were doing that. And in order to, yeah, to pump them up, to give them some uh, ego, Detlef made this elephant, which was the symbol of that movement. A sort of similar situation also with the dragon. It was made in 1989 it was supposed to be shown during the festival of the youth in east berlin at the big uh, meeting there in order to well it was sort of like a freedom dragon he was trying to make objects in order to make people happy at times where things were quite dreary How about the, clown? the clown that he made is basically just for fun it is uh, something that he's made for uh what you might call it uh, uh like a county fair type uh, uh, things where in East Germany they would have these local fairs and in order to make things brighter and happier than they really were, Detlef would show up and uh, be commissioned to make these objects and one of them was this clown which you have seen here. materials in the kite are uh, those found uh, by the ordinary American boy in the 20s. Wrap, brown wrapping paper for cover, a pine board cut down for stick, cotton string around for the perimeter of the frame, a cotton string for the flying line, cotton cloth for the tail. And uh, in those days, uh, the tail should be dirty, otherwise uh, the kid was considered a sissy. Uh, Liang Kai Ho uh, got to play kai just because he 
uh, he it, uh, got a, a broken kite in in the street. Uh, he, he said, "I can try to fix it, then uh, fry it, uh, and fi and he found the fun it of 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 playing a kite. So he started to play kite." Last year, uh, uh, Liang Tai Ho got a video uh, of Long Beach Kind Festival from uh, his friend, and he decided to join uh, the festival this year. Uh, and he started to think about that, uh, how to, uh, what you uh, would like to bring. And he, he, he think that uh, 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 500 years ago, uh, the American, uh, the American continent was discovered by Columbia. So he, he said uh, boat would, would be a good idea, so he started to make, a, uh, make boat. And in fact, he makes uh, seven boats. Uh, this time, uh, four his family come, so he bring four boats on. And this time, he uh, come Long Beach. He say it's a beautiful place to play kite. Uh, this uh, the beach is short in Taiwan. Uh, it is impossible that have such a comfortable place to play kite like Long Beach. He like Long Beach very much. A uh, gentleman. Uh, Ivan, uh, he's a supervisor of American Culture Center in Taiwan. He gave uh, uh, Mr. Liang a, a video tape of a, a Long Beach uh, kind of festival, and uh, Mr. Liang find that uh, a lot of uh, uh, Thai lover join uh, this festival. So he decided that he have to join uh, uh, this festival uh, 1992. So he been he bring all family come.
built just hey, like they're the, great. I just love like them. The, I think uh, they're great. Ones. This is more of the rustic approach here. Anyway, we've always wanted to see if we could do a quad line on this thing. Um, let's, let's try it. It's the first, first time try. That says honeycomb kite. Look up out here. Look up out here. Look at it. Okay. Once you get it out there, when you get in the air, you pop it and you turn the We need uh, I fly backwards. What you need is a kite that when it reverses, you'll know it instantly, you know. That the colors, the color change will be sufficient that everyone will know exactly what's happening. Uh-huh.
nailed it down. Cellular ties, flat ties, dimensional ties. Here's Ray Bethel setting a world's record for flying three stunt hikes for five hours and 40 minutes.
Here is David Britton doing his quad performance. I'm with Bob Anderson here from Concord, California, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his windsock here. Thank you. 
The, uh, the sock, first off, how we've bridled the sock down is uh, we, have about, we have a large tractor tire that's been buried about eight feet into the ground. To the tractor tire, there's a 30,000 pound test strap. To the strap, the flight line is 12,000 pounds, and there's a 2,000 pound safety line. Uh, the process I'm bringing the parafoil down is simply by taking the safety line, uh, we'll pull it, it'll collapse the parafoil, the parafoil will come down very softly. From that point, we will use a strap around the bridle point of the windsock, walk toward the windsock, and collapse that. Uh, some statistics about the sock is that the, the bridles, there are 78 100-foot lines. It's about two and a half uh, miles of bridle lines. The sock is uh, about 55 feet at the opening. The sock itself is 208 feet, so from bridle point to tails is 308 feet. It consists of about 12,500 square feet of fabric. I'd also like to say thank you very much to Dave Green uh, from Greens of Burnley out of Lancashire, England. Uh, Dave and five people spending an hour, uh, excuse me, 150 hours of time on this thing. Uh, I hope you've all recovered from that point. Uh, I believe there was something like seven, uh, seven to nine miles of thread that went into this particular piece. And I am very pleased with it, Dave. Hope you've all enjoyed it, had a great time here in Long Beach, and I'm looking forward to coming back again. Thank you.
think this is the greatest way to really make this Kite Festival international. And we're looking forward to see you in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I always wanted to go to Germany. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And your beautiful talent. Unwashed kite war in America. What else can I say? Your name inscribed upon my thigh. Unlike David Gomberg, I will wear these anywhere in front of anybody. I don't care. I got nothing to lose. 140 I got from Chuck was for 150. 140 is going on. 140 is going twice. Laugh not, Dave. It's Chuck for 140 bucks and he's just. That's what all you guys want to learn.